All right, it's preaching time. Brother Alan Barker, if you want to go ahead and make your way up here and just give to us what the Lord has laid on your heart. We appreciate you coming in and filling for our pastor during these times he is away. And I appreciate you so very much, sir. Thank you, brother. Sure. All right, it's a real joy to be here tonight. Good to see you in the service tonight. And uh, good to be in the house of God. I appreciate the opportunity of coming back and being at Brian Baptist Church. It's been a while since I've been here, but uh, it's good to be here tonight. Good to see you in the service tonight. How many glad you're here tonight? Say amen. amen. Did y'all get any rain this afternoon? We got an inch. We've had an inch and three tenths in seven weeks. And we got an inch of it this afternoon. I'm about to shout. Somebody say amen. amen. My yard is dried up. I mean, it's, I, I mean it's, it's, it's just crunchy. But I appreciate the good rain, appreciate the good day, and good to be in the service tonight. I miss the pastor. Always do miss him when he's not here. I know we do want to pray for him. Pray God to help him tonight. And I know the Lord will use him where he's at. So do remember him in prayer. I really appreciate your preacher. I, I say this all the time when I'm here. But I really do appreciate uh, Pastor Beatty. And uh, not only him being a great pastor, great preacher, but how God is using him across this country uh, to help our country. I mean that with all my heart. I got to come the other day when Mark Robinson was here, and I really appreciate Return America and what they do. And uh, I will tell you something tonight. Our country's in trouble. And uh, I want to encourage you. If you've not got signed up to vote or registered to vote, man, alive, listen, do it. Get it fixed so you can vote. And uh, you say, who am I going to vote for? You're really not that dumb. I know you're not. <laughs> so uh, I do encourage you to do that. And, uh, and I do appreciate the preacher tonight. I really do what he does. I uh, help in our country and I praise the Lord for him. What a blessing he is, not only to you here, but all across, this, all, across, all across North Carolina. And I appreciate how God's using him in a mighty way. And again, I do miss him. I wish he's here tonight. And, uh, but anyhow, I know God's using him where he's at. And it's good to be here and be in service tonight. Appreciate you being here and being in the house of God. And uh, I mean, he's had a good day. Say amen. Hey Amen. If you get as old as I am, you're always having a good day. If you can get up, you're having a good day. And, and by the way, the older you get, the richer you get. Did y'all know that? Some of y'all are getting pretty rich in here. And uh, I read this the other day. The older you get, the richer you get. Silver in your hair, gold in your teeth, sugar in your blood. Precious stones in your kidneys. Amen. But anyhow, that, uh, I guess that's getting older. But anyhow, you're getting richer, I mean. But anyhow, it's good to be or not good to be in service. I really appreciate your church. I mean that with all my heart. And uh, I, I sat there tonight and enjoyed what was going on. And you say, well, you're saying, preacher, I like being around the church that's got something going on. And uh, something is going on here. And I like it. I sure do. Announcements. I preach in a different church every week. This past year, I was in 75 churches. I'll be in more churches than that this year. And uh, churches across this country is in trouble. And uh, I appreciate what the Lord's doing here. I was in a church just a few weeks ago. And on Sunday night, they didn't have one song. They didn't have one prayer. Uh, we walked in, sat down. Preacher said two or three words, said, come on, preach. Am I telling the truth? And uh, matter of fact, I was in church. I'm not going to tell you when because I'm on the internet. But anyhow, uh, not long ago, just about the same way. And I'm glad to, I'm good to be here where something's going on. Uh, good singing tonight, good choir singing tonight. Brother, I promise you I'm going to pray for your mother. I mean that. I really mean that with all my heart. And uh, good singing tonight. Then that lady just got done singing. I don't know. I guess she left. I don't know where she's at. But uh, it was great. Who sang tonight? Where's that lady at? Oh, there you are. Good job tonight. I enjoyed that. Well, take your Bible tonight, if you will. Turn anywhere you want to. It's all good. It really, really is. Psalm 84. Why don't you look there with me tonight? Psalm 84. And I want to share a little thought with you out of this chapter tonight. And I trust the Lord will use it to speak to our hearts tonight. Psalm 84. If you'll stand with me, please. We'll read. This is a Sunday school lesson. I I'm telling you, it's a Sunday school lesson. Sunday morning, I was in West Virginia, Sunday and Sunday night both. And I'm sitting there on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and uh, make one or two announcements. They sing a song. And the pastor is opening Sunday school. And he said, now you pray. Preacher Barker's coming to do Sunday school. That's the first I'd heard of it. I had three heart attacks. 
And, uh, but anyhow, uh, I flipped to this chapter and read this chapter. And it spoke to my heart. So I taught it Sunday morning. Tonight I want to preach it. That'd be okay? How many like preaching? Say amen. amen. You're in the wrong place if you don't like preaching. Because you have a preacher for a preacher. Amen. Psalm 84, verse number 1. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul, longeth, uh, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow has found a house and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her, uh, lay her y- uh, young. Even at thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, bless are they that dwell in thy ha- uh, bless are they that dwell in thy house. They will still be a praise in thee. Bless is the man whose strength is in thee, and whose heart are the ways of them. Who passes through the valley of Becca, make a well. Uh, the rains also fill the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appear before God. O Lord God of hosts, uh, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our shield. Look upon the face of thine anointed. A day in thy court is better than a thousand. Somebody say amen. Uh, A day in thy court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is a man that trusteth in thee. Our heavenly Father, I have a real desire to be a blessing tonight. Lord, I thought about many things to preach on when I talked to the preacher yesterday. But Lord, this is what you so put in my heart for the service tonight. And I pray that you'll take it, you'll speak to our hearts tonight. I want to be a blessing, I want to be a help. Lord, I want to be encouragement tonight. And I pray, God, that when we leave this place tonight, may we leave this place with a thankful heart, thanking God for the house of God. And I pray you'll speak to our hearts most of all tonight. There's somebody here lost tonight. I pray they'll be saved tonight. And I'll thank you for all you do. Be with Pastor Beatty tonight. Lord, I pray you'll touch him. I pray you'll help him tonight. Give him that that he needs tonight. Be with our dear brother, our choir director tonight. Lord, please be with his mother tonight. And meet that need there in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for sending you to be seated tonight. When you come to Psalm 84 tonight, you'll find the Holy Ghost is the author. And we're not sure who the penman is. We're not sure who wrote the psalm. But we do know who the author is, and that's the Spirit of God. And uh, when you study this psalm tonight, you'll find that it was used by the Jews uh, in many different ways. One way, that, one way the Jews use this psalm here, uh, they would sing this psalm and use this psalm uh, when they were in captivity. If you remember studying how they went off into captivity, and while they was there, uh, they used this psalm here. And in this psalm here, they longed to be in the house of God. They had a desire to get back to the temple, a desire to get back to the house of God out while they was in captivity. And that's where Psalm 84 comes in tonight. While they're there away from God, away from the house of God, how they're longing for the church. And that's what Psalm 84 is all about tonight. Uh, Their desire to get back to the house of God and uh, get back to the temple there. And uh, they would sing this psalm. They would read this psalm and they would uh, sing this psalm when they're there in captivity. And when you study it tonight, you know there's many a time I felt like I was in captivity not physically, but spiritually. But when you get to the house of God, you always get help. And so it is here with this psalm here tonight. I thought about this psalm when I stood in today. Psalm 73 reminds me of this psalm also. If you remember Psalm 73, we're not going to turn. I read it again today. Uh, psalm 73, if you remember, Asap, the, the one that about the psalm is about. And in that psalm, he did not understand. He saw how the wicked had prospered. He saw how it seemed like they had the blessings on them and how the wicked prospered in all different ways. Uh, how they was increasing goods and increasing riches and uh, Asaph did not understand that until he went into the house of God. He said in Psalm 73 that his foot almost slipped. Uh, my, uh, almost slipped until he went to the house of God. And so it is here in this psalm here tonight. You get help at church, thank God. Uh, somebody said, I live as good at home as I can at church. It's just one thing wrong with that statement. It's just not true. And uh, you get help when you come to the house of God. So I'm going to preach tonight out of this psalm tonight on this little thought tonight. Hey, 
Look what I found at the house of God. Hey, look what I found at the house of God. And again, I want to say thank God for the house of God tonight. And thank God for this psalm tonight. I like what F.B. Meyer said about this psalm. He said this is one of the sweetest psalms as found in all the book of Psalms tonight. And I'll just say this in that thank God for the house of God. Thank God for the church. You know what the church is tonight? We are a family. Did y'all know that? I was preaching in jail today and I was telling them how that we're a family. And, and the church is a family tonight. And, uh, and I want to say to you tonight, the house of God. Thank God for the church, the family of the house of God. Berean Baptist Church. Hey, Berean Baptist family. Uh, you're a family that work together. You're family that stick together. I was listening as the prayer request was being given out. And as he's giving them out tonight, I know you pray for those prayer requests. And uh, you know why we do that? We do that as a family. I'm a member of the church also. And uh, my son is my pastor. I don't never get to see them. Matter of fact, he tells people I am the most unfaithful church member he's got. Because I never get to go hard. I'm always gone. But my church family, and I get to things on my phone every day about my church family. And we pray about things and we're family together and I'll say to you this afternoon how the church is a family today and thank God for the church tonight and thank God for the family the church of God uh, this evening and I want to say this for our priest tonight the church tonight is the greatest organism on the top side on the top side of God's earth can I say that again? Hey, the church is the greatest organism on the top, top side of God's earth and may I say this tonight it's not an organization it's an organism. Uh, an organization is uh, some kind of business, but an organism is something that's alive. And may I say tonight, thank God the church is alive tonight. It's not dead, it's alive this evening. And thank the Lord for the church tonight. Can I say this about the church? Uh, I've always been in church. Uh, just, just a few months. Uh, when I was about 18 years old, I got out of church. Just a few months when I first got married, my wife and I, uh, and I got married in October. I, no, I didn't. I got saved in October of 1970. We got married in December of 1970. And, uh, I, and, and just before we got married, I had got out of church. My life was not right with God. And, uh, and uh, you know what happened? We got married. Guess what happened? I got her out of church. But it wasn't long, just a few months. We got our life straightened out, got in church, and that, that's been 54 years ago. And I'll just say this tonight. Thank God for the church tonight. Hallelujah. I for a place to come. I, I, for the most of my life, I've always been in church. And I'll just say this about the church tonight. If you've got anything bad to say about it, don't say it to me. Hello? I thank God for the church tonight. What would you do without your church family tonight? Uh, you band together, you pull together, you work together. I uh, thank God for the church tonight. Matter of fact, I, I, again, I, all, most of my life, I have been in church. Matter of fact, I went to church nine months before I was ever born. I did, I really did. And uh, my daddy was pastor of the church at that time. And uh, since, uh, uh, and his wife went to church, my mother. And I'll just say this to you tonight. I was baptized, when I got right with God, I was baptized, I got saved at home. But when I got right with God, I was baptized into the fellowship of a local church. I was married in a church. Uh-huh. I give missions and give faith promise offering and give tithe every week of my life to my local church. Uh, for almost 50 years, the local church has fed my wife and I and taken care of my wife and I. And the clothes I have on tonight is because of some church somewhere. And uh, everything I have tonight, God, through a church tonight, thank God, has given that to me this evening. And by the way, I want to say this tonight. When they have my graduation service, it's not going to be at a funeral home. If we got funeral directors here tonight, God bless you, thank you for what you do. But I, they're not having my graduation service at a funeral home. You'll say, how do you know? I didn't get fixed up. And uh, if she has my service at the funeral home, when I have a graduation, you know what I'm going to do? Y'all know what I'm going to do if she does that? Nothing. But listen to me. I, I, I will say tonight that my graduation service is going to be at the church. Jesus told Peter, he said, Simon, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And thank God the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I say hallelujah for the church tonight. It's real, thank God for it tonight. Hey, Christ loved the church. Christ established the church. 
Christ died for the church and Christ is coming back for the church. And I'm glad I'm a part of the church tonight. Are you listening to me? I say thank God for the church this evening. And God, just say this before I preach tonight. I do not understand, uh, especially independent Baptists, I do not understand why some of those guys are taking church and Baptists off their side. Are y'all hearing me? I wouldn't have a dog or what name. I'm telling you, I don't understand that tonight. How that bothers me. I, I know what is independent Baptist tonight. How they have taken that off. And uh, they, they took Baptists off her son. I'm not ashamed to be a Baptist. I'm an old fashioned, independent, premillennial, white horse riding Baptist tonight. Amen. And not ashamed of it. Are you hearing me? I, I want to say this tonight. Thank God for the church tonight. And, 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 and you see these places. They take church off. Some of them are called fire houses. Upon this rock, I'll build a fire house. Upon this rock, I'll build a Clyde. Upon this rock, I'll build a club. Upon this rock, I'll build a worship center. Upon this rock, I'll build a point. Upon this rock, I'll build a rock. I'm preaching good, are y'all hearing me? Thank God for the church tonight. Hey, 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 man. Berean Independent Baptist Church tonight. Hey, don't be ashamed of that tonight. You'll say, preacher, if you was not a Baptist, what would you be? I'd be ashamed. I'd really be ashamed. And can I say this tonight? The reason I am what I am tonight and because I'm an independent Baptist is because I do believe with all my heart that's the closest thing to the Scriptures out of the Word of God tonight. I want to say, listen to me now. Thank God for your church tonight. A place you come and worship and enjoy one another's presence tonight. I, I got to get in this thought. Notice with me tonight. I got to get uh, this Sunday school lesson, so let's get to it. Notice with me tonight, first of all. I want you to see the desire the desire for the house of God. Notice in verse one and two, the Bible said how amiable. That's, by the way, that's a good word. It simply means dear. It means beautiful. It means lovely. And boy, they something about the church. <laughs> how amiable, how beautiful. Oh, the tabernacles, oh, Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. Talking about church. They're in captivity. Can you imagine this? They're in captivity. They can't get back to church at this time. They can't get back to the temple. And they're longing to get back to the house of God. Notice in verse 2. How uh, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Notice the desire here tonight. I can see them as they're away from the, the, the Jerusalem and away from the temple tonight. And they've got a longing and they've got a desire just to get back to the house of God. Can I say this tonight? Hey, something about church. I can walk into a church building. Nobody there. And there's something about just getting in church. Uh, the three churches I pastor, two of them, I lived for many years right beside the church. Two different pastorums I lived in. And I lived right beside the church. Last church I pastored, I lived right beside of it. And of course, when I was at Turner's Creek all those years, I lived right beside the church. And, and I'd go to church every day. I had an office there. And I would go over to the house of God. And I could walk in the church. Nobody there. Boy, there's something about the house of God. And I realize this tonight. This is a building. I realize that. Uh, Sheetrock, I realize tonight we have the ceiling, the lights and all that. But I'll tell you, there's something about the church tonight. Hey, man, there's something about walking in to the house of God. And, and notice what he says here in this verse. He says in verse 2, Yea, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. Let me ask you a question. What's your heart cry out for? Huh? I, 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 again, very seldom I have a week off. I, I, and to God be the glory, and I, I appreciate the Lord keeping me busy. But you know, most of the time I'll preach Sunday morning through Wednesday night, most of the time. And about Thursday evening, I find myself getting ready to want to go to church somewhere. I mean, it's just, it's just there. And if I go a week and don't preach, woe be unto my wife. Because she's going to get preached to. Are you hearing me? And, and they just sent, I just want to go to church. And notice the desire here. He says in verse 2, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. 
Uh, the word means crave. Lona means craving after. And, and I've asked you a question now. Is that the way you feel about your church? Man, I desire, I can't wait to get to the house of God, hear the pianist, hear the organist, hey, hear the choir sing, hear the men of God preach. Hey, he had a desire to be there. Notice his desire to not desire to be there. Look at verse number two. Hey, just one thing better than going to church. And right here it is in verse two. My soul longeth, yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. The only thing better than going to church is going to church when he's there. Did you get what I just read? It's going when he's there. And buddy, don't you like it when he's there? Hey, when he shows up, I want to tell you, preacher's telling me yesterday, he said, y'all had a great day Sunday. Said had a good service, good spirit in the services. Great day Sunday. He's telling me about your day Sunday. And, and he's excited about what the Lord did here Sunday. And may I say to you tonight, that there's one thing better than going to church. That's going to church when the Lord's there. Amen. Get excited, man, when he's there. Notice the desire, the desire. Then notice something else tonight. Not only see the desire for the house of God, but then don't you see this tonight? Don't you see the discovery in the house of God? Notice what the psalmist discovered when he got the house of God. And notice what he says in verse three. Yea, the sparrow, that's that bird, that's worth less than an eighth of a cent. The sparrow, have found a house. And the swallow, that's the chimney sweep. That's even cheaper and less value than the first one. Uh, the swallow have found a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even at thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. You say, what are you talking about? The discovery. Here's a discovery. Notice who was welcomed there. The swallow, and also in the verse here, not only the swallow, uh, but, but also the uh, sparrow, you say, what does, that, what does that mean to you and I? Here's what it means tonight. It doesn't matter who you are, how poor you are, what your name is, who you're at, what your status is, you're welcome at church. Isn't that good? Hey, you're welcome at church. The sparrow that's not worth much at all, uh, the swallow that's like a chimney sweep, it's the prodigal bird. It's the prodigal bird. And may I say this to you tonight? You know who's welcome at the house of God? Hello. I said the prodigals were, were, he's welcome. I don't care what they've done. Hey, I don't care what they did. They're welcome at the house of God. And by the way, that's what they need. When I'm at home and I get to, I get to preach in jail every week. I get to get locked up. I got locked up today. Preached two times already today, three times, whatever. And, and, and here's what I started to say. We have guys get saved in jail. And when they get out of jail, We've had them join the church. Uh, they come to the church where I live. Island Ford Baptist Church is right above where I live. Pastor Betty has preached there several times. And uh, the preacher there helps me. We work together in jail. And uh, my home church is almost in, it's between Galax and I'm between Mount Air and Galax. So those guys that get out of jail in Yakin County, we, uh, we, we recommend them to the church. And you know what? When they get saved in church, I get saved in jail. Our next goal is to get them in church. And we tell them, hey, look, man, if all you do is you say you got saved in here, and when you get out, if you don't go to church, all you got is jailhouse religion. All you're doing is making a mockery of it. But you know what? Thank God some of them get in. And, uh, and uh, just a few weeks ago, I was preaching Island Ford, and I several there that got saved in jail and got out of jail, and they're there now, and they're members of the church. You say, well, Brother Barker, I don't think I'd want them jailbirds in my church. Send them up my way. We'll be glad to have them. And may I say this to you tonight? I don't get the sparrow. Notice it, the discovery. Look who's there. The prodigal. That nobody would have anything to do with. The prodigal that's not worth nothing. That's who's welcome in the house of God. May I say this to you tonight? Oh my. Some of them look rough. Some of them got tattoos from here to here. Some of them look rough. Are you listening? And uh, that happened before they got saved. If you've got a tattoo, I'm not throwing rocks at you. I'm just saying this tonight. I'm just saying this tonight. Uh, the, the, who was welcome? Notice the discovery there. The prodigal. Those that listen to me now. Our doors are open. Whosoever will let them come. Doesn't matter what color, what race. Thank God. Hey, they need Jesus and get them saved. Are you listening? Aren't you glad the door is wide open to whosoever will? Whosoever will. Notice something else. You don't see the discovery. That is who's there. Didn't they notice this tonight? Boy, this blesses my heart. Notice in verse number four through verse nine, we see the dwelling in the house of God. Look at verse number four. Bible said, blessed are they, or, or blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Now, I'm gonna give you something in just a sec, but I'll say this. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. 
My dad didn't just say this, and I got so tired of hearing it. Uh, my dad pastored and was pastoring before I ever was born. Pastored for 55 years. He's been in heaven. Matter of fact, what's the date today? What's the date? Day 17th. Next week, my dad will be in heaven se- uh, 17 years. And uh, that's my mind over there, 17 years. And, uh, but my dad and you say this. When I was a kid growing up, we had to go to church. Every service, every service, my daddy would say, thank you for being here tonight. If you come looking for a blessing, you'll get a blessing. I got so tired of hearing that. I, I, I got where I would say it before he said it. Because he said it every service. If you come looking for a blessing tonight, you'll get a blessing. And you know what I found out? He's telling the truth. Now, if you come to look fault fine, you're not going to get anything. If you come to criticize, you're not going to get anything. You come to see what color uh, dress that uh, James got on, you're probably not going to get anything. You come to see which side the hair Joe's got his hair parted, you're not going to get anything. But if you'll come looking, if you'll come seeking, notice the verse. He said, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. I will tell you, you go to the house of God looking for something, I'll guarantee you'll go home blessed every time. Notice, here's what he does. In verse 4 through verse number 11, he gives 15 promises. 15 promises to those that would just be faithful to church. Can I back up and say that one more time? He gives, and I probably ain't gonna get all of them, but he gives 15 promises to those that would just stay in the house of God. Just be faithful to church. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Look at the verse. Let's see what they are. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will still be a praise in thee. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what comes their way. If they'll stay in church, guess what? They'll still be a praising God. They'll still be a thanking God. Are you listening? I, I want to tell you down through the years of pastoring, I, I've watched that. And folk that's faithful to church and folk that don't miss church unless they absolutely have to or sickness, it doesn't matter what comes their way. They'll get through it. And they'll still be a praising God. They'll say God is good. And they'll still be a praising God. Promise number one is, if you'll just be faithful to church, look at verse four. They will still be a praise in thee. They won't, they won't be piddle mouthing. They won't be accusing God. They won't say God's unfair. No, sir, they'll still be a praise in God. Notice another promise. Look at this promise right here again. Verse number, verse number five. Blessed are they, bless those men. Who, uh, let's read the verse right, verse five. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee and whose heart are the ways of them. You know what else you'll get if you come to the house of God? If you just be faithful, you'll get strength. You'll get help. I, are you hearing me? I went to church many a time discouraged. But I'd sit there and listen to my preacher preach. And boy, I won't tell you, when he got done, the choir got done singing, got done with the service, hey, I was ready to charge hell with a water gun. Are y'all listening to me? You'll get strength in the house of God. I'll promise you, you always get strength. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, doesn't matter what's going on. Hey, be in the house of God. Look at the verse. He said, blessed is a man whose strength is in thee, whose heart are the ways of them. You go to the house of God, and I'll guarantee you'll get strength. Look at verse six. Notice something, notice something else in verse six. In verse number six, you'll get help in the valley. Those that stay in the house of God, those that are faithful to church, those that does not miss church, those that sire every time the doors open. Notice the promise in verse six. Who passeth through? Underline through. Who passeth through the valley of Becca? Make it a well. The rains also fill the pools. Can I tell you what that's talking about? The valley of Becca is not a literal valley, but it's simply talking about a valley of testing, a valley of trials, a valley of hardship. It might be trials, it might be misery, it might be difficulty, it might be disappointments, it might be setbacks. And on the journey of life, we have that. And they that dwell in the house of God, they that dwell in the house of God, they'll pass through the valley of Becca. Uh, it don't come to stay, it comes to come to pass. And I'll tell you tonight, that those that stay in the house of God, when they go through that storm and go through the valley of Becca, are you listening to me? Hey, they make it, friend. They go through it. They get through it and they go on through it. Again, I want to remind you tonight, we all have all kinds of problems. We're not exempt from trouble. We're not exempt from problems. Hey, we're not exempt from sickness. But I'll say this tonight. They that dwell in the house of God, those that are Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, they pass through the valley of death. They don't let it get them out, church. 
You ever seen anybody get out of church over problems? You ever seen anybody get out of church over sickness? You ever seen anybody get out of church because they felt like that God wasn't fire to them, that it wasn't fire what was happening? I've seen that happen a many a time. But those that stay in church and those that are faithful Sunday morning, Sunday night, who passes through? It didn't come to stay. We go through it, thank God. We're going to come out on the other side. I like what the psalmist said. Psalm 30, verse 5. He said, that weeping may endure for tonight, but joy cometh in the morning. And I want to say this to you tonight. I don't know what your Valley of Becca is tonight, but I'll promise you this tonight. You'll make it a whole lot better by being faithful to church. You'll, make, you'll get help. Every time you come to church, you'll get help. Have you ever come to church and said this? Somebody called the preacher and told him what I'm going through this week. Hello, Tokyo. <laughs> I know who called him. And uh, it wasn't Verizon either. Are y'all hearing me? Somebody a whole lot higher than Verizon called him. And I want to tell you, that man of God that lays in with God and prays and seeks the face of God and walks behind this pulpit, you have that kind of man of God, and, and preaches across his pulpit three times a week. He knows how to feed the sheep. God knows what you need. And God knows how to direct the men of God. And God knows how to show the men of God. Who passes through? I'm telling you tonight, those that dwell in the house of God and stay faithful, they'll go through the valley of Becca. They won't get out of church. They won't get bitter on God. And I'll tell you, the, the, our country is full of people. It's full of bitterness tonight because something happened in their life they don't understand. I want to tell you something tonight. There's a lot of things happen in my life I don't understand. Uh, there's a lot of things happen I don't understand. But I know this tonight. When I can't track him, I can trust him because I know he always does right. Who passes through the valley of Becca? Look at verse again. I got to move. Look at verse 6. Who passes through the valley of Becca? Make it a whale. Make it a whale. The rains also fill the pool. You know what that's talking about? While you're there, make a whale. What do you mean, preacher? Somebody may need to drink out of your well. Somebody may, you may be able to help somebody that nobody else can help because you've been there. You've experienced that. And uh, somebody may need to drink out of your well. And, and I want to say to you tonight, the only way that's ever going to happen is stay faithful to church. Just stay in church. Just say, now realize who I'm preaching to tonight. I'm preaching to the Wednesday night crowd. And the best I'm telling out, we've got something under 500 in this service tonight. That's right, amen. And, and can, I, can I tell you something tonight? I'm a very positive thinking person. <laughs> but listen, I, listen to me. I know you're the faithful crowd. But I just want to say this to you tonight. The Spirit of God wants me to come and tell you, just stay in church, man. Say by the self, you'll pass through the valley of Becca, if you will, who passeth through the valley of Becca. Then look at verse number eight. Here's another promise. All you got to do is just, Stay faithful to church. Look at verse 8. The Bible says in verse number 8, I can't skip verse 7, who go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appear before God from strength to strength to strength. You know what you do? You come to church and you get strengthened. You come to church, you get help. We drag in here sometime and, and, uh, and uh, are, are you listening? When the saints come dragging in. I know about that. And we drink in sometimes. And by the way, I want to say this to you tonight. We all have hard times. We all have hard days. We all go through that. But man, when you come to church and sit down under the men of God and hear the good choir singing and hear the good men of God preach, men a lot, you get out of here and go home charged up for the glory of God. All you got to do is just be faithful to church. They that dwell in the house. Look, look at verse number seven. Uh, uh, look at verse number eight. Here's another promise. All you got to do is dwell in the house of God and you claim his promise. Oh, Lord, God of hosts. You know what that means? That has to do with more than one. God hears the prayers of the church collectively, but it doesn't stop in that. Look at verse 8. Oh, Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God of Jacob, as single, as individual. And can I tell you something tonight? I believe God answers your prayer. I believe God answers the prayer of the Berean Baptist Church when you pray collectively and pray together about these prayer requests. I believe God answers your prayer. But you know what thrills my heart? Hey, you know what makes me want to run up to down to 901 and back? Are you listening? Is that 901? I don't know what road that is. But anyhow, you know what makes me want to run to the highway and back? When God answers my prayer as an individual, as an individual. And that's what he's simply saying in the verse here. Uh, he said, oh, Lord God of hosts. 
He answers every, he, everybody's prayer. He can do that. But he goes down personally to you and I. Oh, God of Jay, that's individual. And I'll say, those that just stay in the house of God, those that just stay in the house of God, he'll do that for them. Look at verse 9. Here's another promise. Behold, O God, our shield, look upon the face of thine anointed. Can I tell you something tonight? God will shield you. God will take care of you. Saturday afternoon, I don't know what time it was, 6.30, 6 o'clock. I'm sitting in an altar in Frankfort, West Virginia. And the church, nobody in the building but just me and God. And the little prophet's chamber behind where my wife and I was staying. And uh, uh, I'm sitting there and I'm praying. I have a list of preachers I pray for every week on my phone. You're a pastor. I pray for for this church every week. I like y'all. Y'all like me. But anyhow, here's what I started to say. I was praying, doing my prayer list, praying Saturday afternoon. And my phone lit up, and it was a pastor's name where I was preaching. And I thought, I just had left him, and I thought, well, something must be wrong. I said, hello. He said, did this shot President Trump? I said, do what? He said, did this shot President Trump? And where I'm staying doesn't have any internet. Where I'm staying, there's not a TV. Where I'm saying God only comes out twice a week. Are you listening? Sun only shines one day a week. And uh, he said, uh, if you want to, you can come over to my house. So we went ahead. I went ahead and finished my prayer. Got done praying my prayer list. Got in the car and went over to the pastor's house. He had Fox News on. You know what God done Saturday afternoon? Look at verse, look at verse 9. The Bible says verse 9, Behold, uh, uh, behold, O God, our shield, Look upon the face of thy anointed. You know what God done Saturday afternoon? He put a shield. You, you, listen, you've got to be blind not to believe that. He put a, you say, well, he just, he just luckily turned his head at the right time. Luckily, what in the world's that? You ever heard tell providence? Are y'all hearing me? There's not a doubt in my mind. And may I say this to you tonight? This promises those that are faithful to church. He'll put a shield about. He'll take care. Look, look at verse number 10. Mm. Well, look at verse 11. Let me give you verse 11 before I give my last point. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. He'll give light. He'll give direction. He'll give protection. He says, uh, the Lord will give grace and glory. I like this. He'll give you grace whatever you're going through. But he won't only give you grace whatever you're going through if you'll be faithful to church. He'll give you glory too. Look at the verse. Uh, He says in the verse here, the Lord will give grace. Then he'll give glory. You can shout in the valley. You can march on for the glory of God. Those that dwell in the house of God, that's the whole deal. Those that are faithful to church, he'll give grace. And while you're going through it, giving you grace, hell, once in a while he'll give you a little glory. <laughs> Look at the rest of the verse. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Those that just stay in church, God will take care. Notice this, and I'm done. In this psalm tonight, I simply see this tonight. I see, first of all, the, I, I see the desire for the house of God. I see the discovery of those that are in the house of God. I see those that dwell in the house of God and the promises for those that dwell in the house of God. But can I give you my last point? Here's my favorite point. I want you to see the delight, the delight in the house of God. Look at verse 10. Is it okay if I preach a Bible? Look at verse number 10. What's verse 10? For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Notice the desire in the house of God. Notice what he said again. For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. The doorkeeper's the first one here and the last one to leave. Are y'all hearing me? I kind of like that, don't y'all? The first one here and the last one to leave. Look at the verse. For a day in thy course, better than a thousand. Better than a thousand. Can I explain to you what that means? I get more out coming to church one service than you get in a thousand days out there in the world. The world has nothing to compare with what we have tonight. We may come in here with a broken heart, but yet you can rejoice. You may come in here sad tonight, but yet you can rejoice. Our dear brother comes in here tonight with his mother sick, and I know his heart goes out to her. But while he's sitting here in the house of God, guess what? He's getting help, and God's a helping him. And I'll say, a day in thy court is better than a thousand. Get more in the house of God in one day than you can get in a thousand out there in the world. 
Can I illustrate that? Let me illustrate and I'm done. How many remember Elvis Presley? Elvis Presley was born in 1935. Elvis Presley died in 1977. Tell you a story about that, but don't have time. He was born in 1935. He died in 1977 at the age of 42 years old. From 1956, get what I'm saying? From 1956 to 1976, which was 20 years, he lived in what's called the world's glory. Listen to this. In 1956, his first hit, First record, first hit that he put out was Heartbreak Motel. That was his first one. The last one he put out was uh, October 1976, and it was called The Way Down. These people on the row, front row here has all those records. They, 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 they tell you about it. That lady right there does, but listen to this. Hear what I'm saying tonight, and I'm done. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. 20 years, 20 years, Elvis Presley lived in this world's glory. That's 1,040 weeks. And the Bible said, one day in thy court is better than a 1,000. <laughs> I get more in the house of God one day than you can get 20 years in his glory. Are y'all hearing me preach tonight? Pre listen tonight. Hallelujah. My soul. What, what, what the house of God is tonight. I'm telling you, I love it tonight. I love it. I love going to the house of God. And may I say this to you tonight, the, 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 the dwelling in the house of God, you get more than one day. One day in thy court is better than a thousand. He had a thousand forty, a thousand. And I'll say this to you tonight, just one day in the house of God. I'll tell you something tonight, you ought to thank God a million times over for your church. Don't take your church for granted. Don't take the man of God for granted. Are you hearing me preach tonight? I'm telling you now, this Berean Baptist family, you're a family tonight. You have a wonderful leader tonight. And I'll tell you, this psalm tonight magnifies the house of God. Just stay in church, man. Uh, things still will go wrong and you'll have problems, but God will get you through them. Hey, God will help you through them. Are you hearing me tonight? He'll give you grace and glory if you just stay in the house of God. I see those that go all to pieces sometimes when problems come their way. I mean, go all to pieces. But that crowd that stays in the house of God, sits under the men of God, and listens to the preaching of the Word of God, oh boy, mm. they just pick up and go on. They just pick up and go on. A room of quietness, a tempest of peace. A home of faith, where doubt and cease. A home of comfort, where hope is given. A source of strength, to help us to heaven, a place of worship, a place to pray. I found all this in the church today. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Something about just coming to church, being in the house of God. I want to tell you, friend, I want to give you this, and I'm closing. I really am closing. Watch this. It's shut. I want to give you four things you ought to do in about 40 seconds. Four things. I said about 40 seconds. Four things y'all do for your church. Number one, y'all to attend it. Can I get a witness? Y'all to attend it. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. 300 independent Baptist churches in the last 10 years has cut their lights off and shut their doors and went out of business. Y'all to attend it. Uh, by missing the service is a vote to cut the lights off. Number one, you ought to attend it. Number two, you ought to command it. You say, what's that mean? You ought to brag on it. Amen. You ought to brag on it. Uh, a frog that won't croak on his own pond ain't much of a frog. Amen. And I, I want to say to you tonight, you ought to command it tonight. Everywhere, all, everywhere you go, you ought, to, you ought to say, hey man, hey, I, I want you to come go with us. I want you to come be with us. I, I go to the Berean Baptist Church. Uh, you ought to see that track Buddy, that, that track's made a hit. I ain't got time to tell the story, but watch this. Uh, I go to the Berean Baptist Church. We, hey, we're having a time over there. God's a blessing. We got a great choir. Man, you just need to come here. I'll preach and preach. 
You ought to attend it. Number two, you ought to command it. Number three, you ought to recommend it. Recommend it. Recommend it. Then number four, you ought to defend it. I'll say this and I'm done. There ain't nobody. I got two or three things you're not going to talk about. Number one, you're not going to talk about my wife. I mean, you're going to have a bad day and you're going to have the worst day if you do. I'll promise you that. You say, you're an old man. Oh, listen, they still fire in the fireplace. Are you listening? You're not going to talk about my wife. You're not going to talk about my children. You're not going to talk about my pastor. I'm telling you, you're not going to talk about my pastor. Number four, you're not going to talk about my church. Are you listening? You know what happened over at Berea and Baptist Church? How much have you prayed about it? Sure, he's getting quiet. I'm going to hush before I kill the service. <laughs> Are you listening? Hey, do you thank God for your church tonight? Don't, don't you appreciate a place that you can come, get your soul fed, and man, a family that cares about you when somebody's sick or somebody dies, how the church rallies around them people and how the men of God rallies around them. That's a, that's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Are you hearing me? Thank God for the church tonight. I want to ask you a question. How much do you pray for your church? Hmm? You ought to pray for your pastor in church every day, many times a day. I'm going to back up and say that again. You ought to pray for your pastor in your church many times a day. I cannot tell you the pressure that's on the men of God that's pastoring churches right now. I cannot, I don't have time to tell you that. You ought to pray for your preacher. And you better pray for your church. My wife and I was talking just a few minutes ago. We was talking about a church. All time, fundamental, soul winning, running buses, old fashioned. It's in a distant state from here. Run 3,000 in church in the 70s and 80s. Today, there's not even a building there. It's gone. Much larger than this. Gone. Highland Park Baptist Church. I'm not talking about Highland Park. That's another church. But Highland Park's not there anymore. I've been to Highland Park and had 5,000 people in that church. It's not even there no more. The building burnt down. It's not even there no more. I'll tell you something now. You better not take your church for granted. I'm preaching good or y'all hear me. Love your church. Love your men of God. And uh, by the way, when something goes wrong, I'll guarantee you the pastor is the first one that hears about it. And he's always there. He's always there. I know you, preacher. He'll be there for you. Thank God for your church tonight. Let's stand together. We're not going to sing. We're not going to do anything. Let's stand together. I'm going to bow my head and have a word of prayer with you. And of course, I, I don't want to close the service by not saying this. If you're here and you're not right with God, you ought to come get right. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, you ought to come get saved tonight. I'll be glad to pray with you. Our dear brother here, though, he'll be glad to pray with you. If you've got a need in your heart, we'll be glad to pray with you. And uh, we sure will. I wasn't going to do this, but I believe I'll go ahead and do it. How many love you, church? Raise your hand. How many wants to come around the altar tonight and thank God for Berean Baptist and thank God for your pastor? You want to come pray? You want to come with me? Come on, let's do it. Let's do it right now. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful. 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 If you can't come and bow, if you want to sit on a chair there anywhere, that'll be fine. Wonderful. God bless that little lady on that walker right there. Every time I come here, she's here. What a blessing. Our Heavenly Father... I want to thank you tonight for the day many, many years ago, I guess 40 some years ago now, you put in the heart of Pastor Ron Beatty to come to Forsyth County down the road down here in this little building down here on the left where the Berean Baptist Church was born and where it started. Lord, that's been a long time ago. And Lord, you have helped them. You have blessed them. You've met needs. 
You've saved souls. You've done a mighty, mighty work. And Lord, as results of this place tonight, the gospel is going out around the world, not only through their mission program, but also through the radio ministry. And I bless you and I thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing here. And I want to bow with these people tonight and thank you for a church that cares. I want to thank you tonight for a man of God, a pastor tonight, with a compassionate heart that cares for his people, that loves his people. And not only loves his people, he loves Christian people all over this nation and being used of God all over this state. I pray you'll continue to protect him, keep your hand about him. God continue to give him extended health to do, do what he needs to do. We sure do need him, Lord, and I pray you'll continue to help him. And Lord, I pray again tonight, Lord, that you'll meet every need here around the altar tonight. We want to thank you. Lord, we just want to come and thank you tonight for letting us come to Berean tonight. I want to thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here. I want to thank you for this good crowd on Wednesday night. Lord, they've come around the altar to thank you and praise you for their wonderful church tonight. So many things we get, so many things we're blessed with just by coming to church. Get more than one day in the house of God and get 20 years out there in the world. And Lord, I pray tonight, I pray tonight, God, please, please meet every need tonight. Lord, I pray these folk will be thankful. Lord, they'll pray for the preacher of their church. Keep your hand about this place. Continue to add to it. May souls be saved. This place be reached for God. And we'll thank you for all you do. I pray in Jesus' name.